1966, the Cultural Revolution erupts in Beijing. A university physics professor gets beaten in front of a large crowd because he taught the theory of relativity to his students and because Einstein went to the American imperialists and helped them build the atomic bomb. They then bring out his wife, who turns against her husband. Their daughter watches as the Red Guards beat her father to death. In 2024 London, Clarence investigates the suicide of a scientist. On the wall, the doctor wrote a countdown using his blood and the sentence, I will see it. Apparently, he's not the first doctor to commit suicide. At Oxford University Particle Accelerator, physics research assistant Saul tells his boss Vera that all of their theories are wrong. All of the physics of the past 60 years is wrong, which means that science is broken. Vera praises him, saying that he still demonstrates great potential for future scientific accomplishment. She then asks him if he believes in God. He says he doesn't. He accepts that this defies all known laws of physics, but he doesn't think it's an argument for God. Vera wonders what's left. She then heads to the accelerator and jumps to her death. Augie Salazar is a nanotech researcher, and Jen is a senior researcher in the theoretical physics group. The latter is doing a meta-study analyzing the results of particle accelerator experiments around the world. The two women are members of the Oxford group, as well as Saul. They're at the bar drinking and discussing what happened a month ago, as all the major accelerators started generating nonsense results. Jane explains that these experiments teach them how the universe works. The two women then head out for a smoke. Saul calls Augie, and all of a sudden she starts seeing a countdown. She asks a man if he sees it, but he doesn't. Jane takes the call and reveals that Vera just killed herself. Clarence investigates Dr. Vera's suicide and adds her photo to the bulletin board. Two last members of the Oxford group physics teacher, Will Downing and Jack Rooney, attend Vera's funeral. Jin is also there, accompanied by her boyfriend, naval officer Raj Sharma. Clarence is outside snapping pictures of the five scientists, as well as Mike Evans, a billionaire who seems to know Vera's mother. The Oxford group share some drinks at a pub and talk about Vera. They notice how Augie is absent-minded. She leaves to grab a cigarette and meets Tatiana, who knows about her countdown. She asks Augie how much time she has left. She advises her to put an end to her nanofiber research and shut down the lab, because nothing good ever happens at zero. Tatiana also asks her to look up at the sky tomorrow at midnight. Augie finds an old decoder in a breakfast cereal that the woman leaves for her. The woman promises that the universe will wink at her. In Inner Mongolia, China, 1967, the professor's daughter Wenji is forced to work at a labor camp. A fellow comrade called Bai Mulin talks to her about the consequences of the deforestation. Since she reads English, he gives her a book titled Silent Spring, which was very influential in the West. It's about how people are poisoning the world. It's like reading into the future if humans persist with the destruction. He warns her not to let anyone see it. Mulin and Wenji become friends as they stroll together in the forest. They also become lovers. One day, the labor soldiers find the book in her bunk. They confront her about it, calling it a toxic propaganda, and vow to punish her if she is protecting someone. Mulin is also present but is unable to help her. She chooses to protect Mulin and gets taken to the division headquarters. Tang Li Hua of the Intermediate People's Court visits Wenji in prison and claims she knows of her own accomplishments as a scholar, so she doesn't want her talent to go to waste. She hands her a paper and asks her to sign it, take a political class, and she'll be approved to rejoin the construction corps. Tang Li Hua also wants her to testify against others in her father's field who are still spreading dangerous ideas as they lack evidence against them. She shows her her mother's signature, but when she refuses, Tang Li Hua warns her that the Military Control Commission will prosecute her. When she remains adamant not to testify, prompting the woman to dump a bucket of freezing water on her. Wenji is then driven to Red Coast Base, a military base where she meets Lei, a political commissar.
as well as Yang, chief engineer. They show her an article she wrote as a scholar and explain that they have a need for her specific talents. So the commission has decided to give her a chance to rehabilitate herself rather than being imprisoned. They reveal that their research at the military base is of the highest security classification. They warn her that if she stays, she'll never leave, when she accepts to stay there for the rest of her life. In 2024, we learned that Clarence has been fired from Scotland Yard, MI5, and OSCT. Jane visits Vera's mother, who turns out to be Wenchi. Wenchi tells Jane that Vera was playing a video game and quite a lot. She shows her a shiny virtual reality headset that Vera was using. Jane then spots a photo of Wenji standing near the radar pick satellite in another life, her first job. Jane tests the VR helmet that takes her to a desert with a pyramid. She starts playing the first level. The sun then rises and Jane spots a dead body on the ground. Jane screams in shock and takes it off. Clarence and his colleague discuss the same helmet. A man named Wade wants it as well because he thinks they're highly relevant. Clarence explains that governments aren't too keen on the notion of science being broken. In 1967, Wenji gets to see her first Red Coast test after three months. They are using the satellite to test the transmission that kills all the birds in the area. Wenji realizes that they tested the coordinates for the target. Wenji gets summoned by the base's commissar and engineer Yang. They inform her of the true nature of the Red Coast project. Red Coast is not an experimental weapons program. They're actually trying to communicate with whomever is out there in the universe. In 2024, Augie and Saul look at the sky at midnight, just like that woman said. The stars start flickering, and Saul realizes that it's Morse code. He uses the decoder and deduces that the flickering is giving them numbers 10, 34, 06, 5, 4, 3. And they match the countdown that Augie is seeing.